here's a new video and this is for Brian for CA Brian asks, can you post a video showing how to use a list box that has multiple selections I like to do a drill down menu at work using multiple list boxes with multiple selections in each of them the first one would be general information then depending on the selections there a user could select from a menu in another list box do you know how to do this well Brian yes I've uh, got a solution for you and I'll show you to you now here's a spreadsheet that has data that will populate the original list box and this is categories you see in categories I have animals minerals and vegetables then depending on the category that you select will populate a list box with either the animals or the minerals or the vegetables then to get started I'll bring the form up and here's the user form that has two list boxes on it like you wanted now you can see that the first list box is populated with the data from the categories animals minerals and vegetables and if I select animals it's going to populate the second list box with the subcategories of all the selections for the animals. If I select minerals, it'll select the data from the minerals area. And if I select vegetables in the first list box, it'll populate the second list box with all the vegetables. So we'll do it. We'll click on animals, and then the second list box was populated with this data from below the animal selection. And the first list box will select minerals, and then we see the second list box was repopulated, it was emptied and then repopulated with the data in the minerals uh, area. Now if I select vegetables the same thing will happen. We'll clear the contents of the second list box and fill it with the vegetable selections. And there you go. And you can go back and forth like this. And then of course you can select from the second list box, but of course that would be redundant uh, coding at this point. You just want to see how do you get this first list box to determine the contents of the second list box. And now I can show you how I do that. I'm going to close the form and we'll go over to VB. And I'll show you the code behind the first list box. And what it does is it calls a routine called load subcategories and it's passing parameters. It's passing the text property of the category list box. So I take the list box category text and I pass that as a parameter into load subcategories. Okay, well how do I load subcategories? I have a habit of creating a module, what's called code, and I'll just put generally my, uh, my software in there. So I'm going to look for a routine called load subcategories. I'll double click on code and here's load subcategories. I'm going to go to the uh, single procedure view so we declutter the screen and you'll see what I do is I clear the subcategories list box first of all UF selections is the name of my user form and then LB subcategory is the name of the list box for the subcategories well you want to clear that and that's going to take off any current selections that are in that list box then what I do is I go to the range Remember we passed a parameter into this routine which was the text value of the category list box. So I'm using that as a parameter to pass in that will tell this routine which category to get the data from to populate the, the secondary list box. Okay, So I had, remember, animals, minerals, or vegetables. Now let's look back over here for a minute. You'll notice that I have some named ranges and animals is right there. It, highlights that cell, that's the cell, that's the range called animals. If I select uh, minerals, there's minerals, and I, if I select vegetables, in each case it puts me at the very top of that list. So let's go back over to uh, VB. And let's see what we do with that information. So we take the name of that category and we activate that, that range but actually we offset one comma zero. This says offset by one row and zero columns. So essentially this says go to the range that is named with the parameter that you passed me and select the cell directly beneath that cell and activate it. And then we enter a while loop 
that says while the current cell's value is greater than an empty string, actually a string with a space in it. So we're going to perform the following operations while that's true. Now remember we've already, we're starting with that uh, list box empty. Now we say back on the UF selections form, take the subcategory, LB subcategory list, uh, list box and add an item which is the active cell dot value. So we're in this loop it says add the active cells value to the subcategory list box. Then activate the cell below this current cell. We end that loop, we come back up here and we say well is this cell got a word in it that's more than a blank? If it does then we're going to go ahead and do these actions again. So we add the next item which in this case is going to be cows. And we add it to the list box and then we drop down one more we get down to the bottom of the loop and says, well, is that value more than a, a blank? Yes, it is. It's sheep. So we're going to add sheep and we're drop down to swine, etc. So that loop repeats until we encounter this cell right here and there's nothing that's greater than a blank in it and this loop ends. So this is just some code to end the cursor up at the top of the list here and it just says go to the UF selections, uh, take uh, UF selections uh, LB category dot text. Remember we have selected animals, minerals, or vegetables in the category. And then ac activate that range. Remember that range is going to be one of these three items right here. And that just says end up on one of those cells. So we'll run through the, the code again. We show the form and we select animals, populates with this list select minerals, populates with that list, and if we select vegetables, populates with that list. If you have any questions, uh, shoot me an email. My email is jacq2 at cox.net. Thanks, and I hope you enjoyed the video.